Welcome back to ECE 441A, 541A. We are on the last leg. We have one more week of class. Next Wednesday will be the last lecture, and that actually means that that's the last day for you to do your teacher course evaluations, which are online, and I would appreciate you taking the time to complete that for me, and that's actually looked at by others, so that's another way that I am evaluated. Office hours tomorrow, I'm having to switch from 11 o'clock to 2. If you were planning to come see me Thursday, I hope that's still available to you. Homework 8 is due Friday. Lab 3 and the project are due Sunday on the 7th. And if you need more material, there's, let's say, introductory Bodhi plot material in Unit 8. After last lecture, I went, well, not immediately after, but later that day, I went ahead and recorded a couple more little videos. 9.1e is based on developing the formula for the steady state air and the velocity gain constant. That's maybe a 10 minute video, but you have the notes also. 9.1M is a MATLAB helped example, meaning I'm using MATLAB to sketch the Bode plots and find the resulting safe or stability margins after computing the phase lag controller. So you might look at those I hope those are helpful. You have the notes and the video available on D2L and the appropriate unit locations. Final exam is two weeks from today, and that will begin at 8 a.m. And homeworks 9 and 10 are on D2L. Those are due next week. And hopefully they won't be too long, but they should be quick and doable based on the material that we've, basically, homework number 10 is very similar to lab number two. It's full state feedback. Today what I want to cover is an overview of really the two different types of controllers we're building in this class using Bode plots, and that's phase lag and phase lead, when or why you might need to use those. And then we will get into the phase lead approach. We'll give the procedure. Maybe we won't call it a recipe today. Maybe we'll move off of that. We're far enough removed from the Thanksgiving break that we won't call it a recipe. But we have the procedure, and we'll see how far we get into an example. And if I don't get that far into the example, I may again record that after this lecture and make that available as a supplementary piece of material. Let's now talk about Bode plot controller design in general. And typically, the first goal when we are thinking about doing this controller design via the Bode plots, our first goal is to really address the steady state error issue or setting a gain. So I'm going to say the first goal usually is to meet. the steady state error specification. Or your original plant may not yet have its gain specified. It may have a K somewhere floating around and some other constants. You now need to figure out based on your steady state accuracy that you're wanting to achieve either due to a step or to a ramp or maybe even to a parabolic input, what that gain value needs to be. Once you've achieved that gain that you want on your system, then let's say a secondary goal might be improving the transient behavior or making the transient behavior acceptable. And by that, typically, we're 
thinking about maybe the percent overshoot or the depending on what kind of design maybe the speed of the response or the peak time or settling time one thing to keep in mind we when we were talking about the root locus and we were dealing with percent overshoot what parameter in our parameterized transfer function did we usually focus on or think about do you remember when we were talking about percent overshoot what parameter comes to mind the damping ratio this zeta value that's not really explicitly associated with the Bode plot but there is a rule of thumb that we can then connect the phase margin with the damping ratio zeta and this is provided in your book as equation 958 and I believe that's on page 659 but that now gives us and again this is a rough approximation but it gives you a guide this says that the zeta value is 1% or 0 0.01 of your phase margin when this phase margin is specified in degrees or if you wanted to achieve a particular phase margin that's related to this zeta by 100 times zeta just solving for phase margin in one equation and zeta in the other as an example of the application of that relationship or of that rule of thumb what do you get when you have a zeta value of 0.7 in a pure two-pole second-order system what percent overshoot is associated with a zeta of 0.7 five percent again that's all based on just having two poles no zeros when we throw a controller in there we've now introduced a zero and that zeta value of 0.7 corresponding to a five percent overshoot is no longer exactly the right relationship but now if somebody said oh I want a zeta of 0.7 and you wanted to do a Bode plot design then that just means that you would like to have a phase margin of 70 degrees that's sort of the relationship that you can then impose on your specifications when you're trying to design a controller based on the Bode plot speaking of the Bode plot design in this class we are focusing on two different controller types let me just say in this class and here is the generic way or sort of a very general way to keep these two controller types their phase lead and phase lag there's two sort of distinguishing characteristics one if one can slow down the system response what kind of a controller is that implied if you can now move your gain crossover frequency to a lower frequency how do we accomplish that with what kind of controller lead or lag or what controller have we already covered so far lag so this is the phase lag this is now think of it as lagging it's a slowing down so this is now giving us this
implication that if we're okay in slowing down the system, then we can apply a phase lag controller. And I'm hoping when you hear phase lag, you start to see this S plane popping into your vision and the pole is closer to the origin than the zero and they're both very very close together it's just this separation between the pole and the zero this is all happening near the origin and in fact if we wanted a PI controller then that pole is right on the origin that's one way of classifying or determining what kind of controller is he wanting. Is he wanting a phase lead or a phase lag? Well, if I say it's okay to slow the system down, boom, you immediately have your answer. You can say, okay, let me think about applying this phase lag controller, which we've already covered. The other case is if you don't want to slow the system down, Here I'm going to say if one does not want to slow down the system, or the system response, that means you want to make the system response peak either at the same speed or maybe a little faster or time, then that's now implying a phase lead controller. There we have just the opposite orientation of our poles and zeros. Now the zero is closer to the origin in the left half plane than the pole and these aren't close to the origin at all necessarily in our S-plane sketch. Those are then the key phrases to key on. Slowing down or not slowing down. If I want it to slow down, phase lag. If I don't want to slow down, then you want to be thinking about performing a phase lead controller. Let's talk about those two controller types in general. So now the phase lag we are willing to move the gain crossover frequency or this omega sub c to a lower frequency. So now I have a Bode plot. And just for fun, which it'll be more for more than just for fun on the final, which is two weeks from today, hint hint. What's the phase margin of this system? What are we looking at? You have two frequencies that you could be a, sort of focusing on. One is the gain crossover frequency. That's where the magnitude goes through 0 dB. And the other is the phase crossover frequency, which is where the phase curve crosses minus 180 degrees. Which of those frequencies do you use to determine the phase margin? Which one? So now you need to look at the gain crossover frequency to then look down and say, is my phase where I need it to be, or where is it if he's asking for the phase margin? 
in this case, where's what frequency are we crossing 0 dB with our magnitude plot? Close to 10, isn't it? It's a little bit more than 10. It's between 10 and 20. And you could then eyeball it, but essentially that's, let's say, 14 radians per second. Then if we come down to the place where we see that, ouch, we don't have much of a phase margin, do we, if any at all? Because what we want is we wanted that blue curve to be fairly high at that, we would have liked it to be somewhere like that to give us a better phase margin. For the phase lag controller, with what's the strategy for achieving the phase margin that we want? Do you remember? How did we do it? Well, in this case, we were willing to move that omega sub c. Here is our omega sub c right now. We are okay with making that smaller, aren't we? Or lowering it or moving it to the left. And the way that we can do that is we can start to bend the magnitude curve down at lower frequencies. And how do you get the magnitude curve down? You introduce a pole. So we might introduce a pole right there. So here would be a pole. And then maybe we don't want to reduce it too much, so we introduce a zero. And that's right there, if you can tell my slope has changed a little bit. And then my curve basically follows what I had before. So it shouldn't really be getting any further away unless I've introduced more poles. So that red curve should be about the same distance away from the blue curve that I originally had once it starts. Now what's my phase margin? Is it better? Yes. Now I have, let's say, achieved something like that. As far as this is now my new gain crossover frequency, omega sub c prime, and my phase margin, whoops, it's not that big, is it? Because 180 is just right there, but this is now my compensated phase margin, and that's bigger than close to zero. What I've done is I've reduced my speed of response because now my frequency, my magnitude is crossing zero dB at a lower frequency. But the benefit of slowing my system down is now maybe it doesn't overshoot as much. I have a bigger phase margin. That's the idea. That's a phase lag controller. Are there questions on that? The idea is you just try to lower your magnitude curve at lower frequencies and you know how to lower the magnitude curve. Introduce a pole. And then you shut that pole's contribution off by adding a zero. And then you simply start to have that magnitude curve lowered, which now gives you a better phase margin. In this case, what is your compensated phase margin? In round numbers, if you have bad eyes like me, it's between 45 and 90 degrees, isn't it? And maybe about halfway between those two. So you just split 45 and 90 and say 60 degrees. It's not a bad phase margin, maybe. Is that clear? That's now how you have compensated your system. Your phase margin now in the compensated system is 60 degrees. Now, if we wanted to do a phase lead design, it 
if somebody's now saying, oh, I want a phase lead design, now they're saying you do not want to move that crossover frequency to the left. You don't want your system to slow down or you don't want it to decrease much. Do not want to decrease the original omega sub c. So I didn't, so the question is a good question. The question was, what happened to your phase curve? How come you didn't modify that, I think, is what was being asked. And in fact, I really do need to modify because I've introduced a, a pole and a zero. But what happens to the phase or what are the characteristics of the phase relative to poles and zeros? The change of phase. What, how are, how is this changing phase related to the location of the pole, for example? Where does it start introducing phase change? Right at the break frequency of the pole? A decade before. And then it quits contributing a decade after. So we've introduced a pole right here. And now the phase is going to start changing, actually, due to that pole back there a decade before. And then what happens? Well, I haven't gone very far, and I kick in a zero. So the zero now starts to flatten. I've, if I wanted to do the phase curve, now I have something like this. And then the zero kicks in. And then... they all start to shut down and the idea is that that zero I've located a decade before I want my new omega sub c prime to occur. That was one of the rules. That was our Julia rule, right? That was the phase lag design. If you missed Monday's lecture, you missed the recipe. Julia Child was here helping us create phase lag controllers. So you might want to watch that. It comes out of the oven very nicely. Where were we? So that, do you see how that red modification of the phase curve isn't yet quite up to the blue when we hit omega sub c prime? That's why we introduced that safety margin. Because we know that the phase doesn't quite finish contributing a decade beyond the zero. But the zero, the idea of this phase lag controller design is we locate that zero first based on where we want the gain curve to cross initially or in the, modifi in the modified design or after the compensator design. And then we go back from there. We find the separation that we need to get the attenuation and then we place the pole. But I was sort of illustrating this just to give you an idea of what's happening with the magnitude curve and how that's impacting our phase. But yes, it will influence the phase curve, but the idea is that the influence is far enough or low enough in frequency that you won't modify your phase curve too much at the new gain crossover frequency. Does that answer your question? Yes, so I should have maybe indicated, but I was banking on the fact that we have a safety margin, and so we're not really modifying that too much, the phase curve at that frequency. Other questions on phase lag? What have we done to the speed of the response on phase lag? Slowed it down. Can I make that point again? That's probably going to be on your final. Design a controller that does or doesn't slow down your system. Boom. Oh, he's telling me something. What's he telling me? I don't know. Started talking about Julia and I got lost. But if you're okay to slow down the system, that's a phase lag controller. 
the other one, the phase lead controller, again, you just have these two types, and we're going to come up with the procedure for the phase lead, hopefully, in just a little bit. The phase lead says, I don't want omega sub c to be changed. We found omega sub c here. That was, let's say, somewhere between 10 and 20. 14, I think, is what we suggested. You could find it easy, more easily with a little bit more analysis or inspection. But let's just say now it's between 10 and 20. And we don't want to slow that down. And we don't have much of a phase margin, do we, in this uncompensated system? We saw that already. This is the same system that we were applying the phase lag to. Well, that means we probably need to somehow bump the phase curve up near this omega sub c. We need to introduce phase. And how do we make the phase curve go up? We add a zero. So in the phase lead design, what we're doing is we are introducing a zero. And the zero's influence actually starts occurring a decade before the zero itself. Let me just say that we want, here is where we want to introduce phase. So now the idea is to bump that up around that crossover frequency. And to get that to go up, we now need to introduce a zero a decade before that. So maybe this is a poor, I was really trying to emphasize that bump, but now we need a zero. And that starts to flatten this out. And then we have a pole, uh, I'm getting everything slopped around here, but this is now the pole of our controller. This is now the idea that we want for a phase lead, and we haven't made the original magnitude blue line cross the zero dB line to the left of where it originally was. We probably pushed it a little to the right. So we haven't slowed our system down. But yet, we have enhanced our phase margin. Our phase margin now for the compensated system would be right there. Is that? Here we introduced the pole first in the phase lag, and then we did the zero in terms of frequency. And here in frequency, we have the zero occurring before the pole. And these are actually going to be close to omega sub c, the original omega sub c, not at really low frequency. So let's now look at this procedure that we've already talked about for phase lag. Let's do a procedure for the phase lead. Again, this particular controller technique is useful when the phase margin needs to be increased. without lowering or reducing the gain crossover frequency. Which another way of stating that is we are not wanting to slow down the system.
now our transfer function that we will be using is a little bit different. It's still time constant form, but now the alpha is going to be upstairs associated with the zero factor and the time constant tau. And you could think of this again as this one plus s over z and a one plus s over p. It's just however you want to write it in terms of tau and alpha or z and p. In fact, this particular procedure in the first couple of steps looks just like the one we did last time. The very first step is to figure out what your gain constant needs to be to satisfy your steady state air spec. So step one is determine the gain constant needed to satisfy the steady state error specification or criteria. Somebody may have a specific value of the error due to a constant input or due to a ramp or due to a parabolic and that will now influence the gain that you use in your transfer function. Once you've determined that, now we can plot the Bode plot for that system, which I'm calling the uncompensated, although we have introduced a gain value. Plot the uncompensated Bode plot, which means magnitude and phase, using the gain that we determined in step one. The third step is now we need to determine the phase margin that results in this particular uncompensated system. Determine the phase margin for the uncompensated system. And again, I'm going to call that phase margin uncompensated, or PM sub U. And now we simply ask the question, is the phase margin PMU meeting our phase margin spec? If the phase margin is sufficient, let's say PMU is 45 and we only wanted a 30 degree phase margin, then we can actually stop. We don't have to go any further. We don't have to introduce any poles and zeros. No phase lead. controller is needed. If we don't meet the spec, if phase margin uncompensated is 5 degrees and we wanted a 60 degree phase margin, then we need to do something. If not sufficient, then we need to determine, and this is what's a little different in the phase lead versus the phase lag, determine the necessary amount of phase needed to satisfy the spec. That gives us an equation or a formula. 
the phase that we need, which I'm going to now call B sub M, that's how much phase we need to introduce at that crossover frequency omega sub C, is our desired phase margin. Let's say that was 60. We take away what we already have, which let's say is 5 in our uncompensated. And again, we introduce a little bit of a fudge factor or a safety margin, phi sub S n. Where phi sub S n is a safety margin in degrees which is needed to account for the shift. We're actually going to shift omega sub c a little bit to the right and we need to account for that. Needed to account for shift of our gain crossover frequency omega sub c omega sub g to a higher frequency and typically we say oh let's just make the safety margin 5 degrees or 10 degrees we don't really mess around with it too much. We just pick one. We say 5 or 10 and we add it on. Now that we have the amount of phase that we need to introduce at the crossover point, now we need to figure out how far apart our pole and zero of the controller need to be. That's step four. Step four says calculate Pole zero separation, which will supply the additional phase that's needed. And that's simply an equation or another formula. We now can relate or find this pole zero separation, again we call that alpha, that's now one plus the sine of the needed phase, one plus sine of phi sub n over one minus the sine of phi sub n. That now tells us we, let's say we need to add 40 degrees. Maybe I should have said 45 degrees. Then we take the sine of 45, which is 0.7. We add it to 1 and we divide by 1 minus 0.7, and that gives us our alpha. And that's how far apart the zero and the pole will be in our controller. That's the alpha. Now that we have the separation, we need to figure out where do we locate the pole and the zero. We know how far apart they are. We need to plot them, pick a point so that we can put them on the Bode plot, and that's step five. Step five says on the Bode plot, Find the frequency at which the gain or the magnitude curve is minus 10 log of alpha. So if alpha is 5, if the pole and the zero are separated by 5, you take the log of 5, scale it by minus 10, and then you go over to your magnitude plot and you find where is my magnitude at minus 3 dB, and you identify that frequency. You'll then call that frequency or designate this frequency. What did I call it? Omega sub n. 
and that's actually going to be the new gain crossover frequency. Now we know how far apart the pole and the zero are. We know our new gain crossover frequency. Now we need to find one or the other, the pole or the zero, and we can do that by finding the tau, the time constant, and that's step six. Step six says calculate the pole and zero locations by calculating the time constant tau. And tau was that variable in our controller. And in this case, that tau is 1 over omega sub m square root of alpha. And omega sub m is our new gain crossover frequency. The pole and the zero are basically on either side of that. And in a logarithmic scale, they're, that point is halfway between the pole and the zero. And that's where this square root is coming from in this expression for our time constant. Once you now have tau, you have alpha, your controller now is established. The phase lead controller is now 1 plus alpha tau s divided by 1 plus tau s. You've just calculated tau, and in an earlier step, you calculated alpha. And this is your phase lead controller. Let's look at an example of that. And you thought the recipe for pumpkin pie was difficult. But what do you have? You just have two ingredients, really, a pole and a zero, and you're needing to find those, but you sort of know, based on what we talked about, what the process is or the concept behind this. Let's say that we now have a plant, G of S, that is K over S, S plus 2. And here is the generic block diagram that we're playing with. There's our interconnection structure. And suppose that somebody gives us the following design specifications. They say, one, they want a steady state air. What's your steady state air? If the closed loop system is stable, and if I apply a, a reference signal that's constant, what's your steady state air going to be if your closed loop is stable? Zero, because it's what kind of a system are we starting with? Type 1. We have one pole at the origin. A type 1 system says if you can stabilize this closed loop with a G sub C, then you're going to get zero air due to a constant. If you tell that system to go to 5, it's going to lock on to 5 after 5 time constants. So this, to give us something non zero, let's say that we're interested in how that system will track a unit ramp. And let's say that we want the air to that to be less than or equal to 0 0.05. And let's assume that the phase margin is greater than 40 degrees. And I really didn't say it, but let's not slow down the system. That was implied when I said this is a phase lead controller design. 
you already see the root locus for that system. If you had to sketch the root locus for the final, can you sketch it? That one you should sketch in 30 seconds, right? You're doing your cheer. Now you're, you've got the two poles, they come together, and where do they come together? Where do they break away? Pardon? Negative one. They break away halfway between each other and then they go up. They don't have a very fast response, do they? But it's fixed at a sigma of minus one. So here's our solution. The very first thing that we want to do is satisfy that steady state air spec. And that wasn't yet picked in our system. They said K over S times S plus two. We need to find that K. So find K using the steady state air spec. As I said when we were first starting today's lecture, I did a little short video after class last time on establishing this relationship and showing where this velocity gain constant is. And that's lecture 9.1e. In unit, num in unit number 9. And k sub v is your velocity gain constant. That's the limit as s goes to 0 of s, g of s, which really only makes sense when you have a type 1 system to find this velocity gain constant, k sub velocity. That's where the v subscript is coming from. If we look at our plant that we had, G was K over S, S plus 2. The S's cancel. We let S go to 0, and we get K over 2. That's the expression for K sub V for this particular system. And we know the relationship between our steady state air and K sub V. That's just 1 over K sub V. We plug in this expression for k sub v based on this system being written in pole zero form. That's why that other factor comes in, that 2 comes in. This says we now have 2 over k, and we wanted that to be less than 0 0.05 or 5 over 100. And now we can solve for k. Now we have 2 times 100 all divided by 5 less than or equal to k. Let's just not crank up the gain too much. Let's just say that we'll make it equal that lower bound. And this is now 20, so k is 40. Is that okay? Did I make a mistake, k is equal to 40. So now in our system, we know what our gain is. We'll let k equal 40, and now g of s is specified. g of s is 40 over s, s plus 2. That's in time, con or what form is that in? As a transfer function. We have two forms that we've talked about, pole zero form and time constant form. Which form is this in? Pole zero. We have these constant terms in our factors are not equal to unity. They're not one. They haven't been normalized. So this is our pole zero form. And if we needed to sketch the Bode plot, we would need to convert that to time constant form, but I did it before class. I cheated. Here's the Bode plot from MATLAB. And what's our phase margin? Do we have a phase margin?
that any better? Maybe not, huh? How's that? Make it even bigger. Whoops. Do you see what we have, maybe, for a phase margin? Do we have a phase margin? We cross 0 dB somewhere between Z or 1 and 10, and that's going to occur at this line. We come down and we have, I don't know, 20 degrees of phase margin. That's not going to meet our 40 degree. We'll, I'll do this probably offline, but what's our gain margin for this system? How much can we crank up the gain before we go unstable? What did your root locus tell you? Your root locus, you did the cheer. How much can you crank up the gain and s remain stable? Infinite. And what's the phase? Does the phase ever cross minus 180? No. So you have an infinite phase margin. I'm sorry, an infinite gain margin. Getting too excited, too worked up. I'm thinking about the turkey. We'll see you on Friday, but I'll probably do this offline, so look for this lecture of this example later.